Welcome to Ross Flybox. Today we're going to tie the firecracker popper. It's one of the standards in my box. It's been with me a while. Let's go over how we tie it. I start off with a size 2 Gamagatsu stinger hook. And flat wax, black thread. And we're going to start our Start our thread right about even with the point of the barb. We don't want to move it forward onto the shank just yet. We're going to bring it back to where the bend starts. And we'll clip off. First material we're going to tie in is red bucktail. And take a small section. You don't want to overdo it on this part. I may go a little bit quick here because uh, bugs can take a while, and I know videos, for the sake of videos, they uh, nobody wants to watch a 20-minute video on one fly. And I hand stack it. I just sort it by hand when I'm tying in a tail on a popper. I'm going to tie it in about one and a half times the uh, the hook size. That should about do it. And then I will trim it off about a quarter inch butt section. I'm going to tie it in right over that small thread base that we just tied in right there. And there we go. The next material I'm going to tie in are grizzly or dark bar ginger, whichever you have, or uh, or Cree, and we're going to take four of them. We're going to tie the first. We're going to tie in two at a time. And I'm going to even the tips, tie them in so that they splay out and away from the hook. I don't try to get fancy. A couple wraps. We can adjust them as we go. I tied those a little bit low on the hook. And you want them just about even with the tail that we tied in to begin with. They're going to splay away from it, so it doesn't matter. Even the tips. Loose wrap, keep them in the position you want them in. Got one that got a little funky. There we go. Tie them down tight so they don't spin on you. And that one that separated a little bit there. And now we're going to trim that off. Just cut them off. No worries. If you get a little straggler there, doesn't matter. It's going to get buggier as you go. Alright. The next material you're going to tie in are your rubber legs. I'm going to use bright orange centipede legs. And we're going to take both of them at once, wrap them around your thread, keep them even, 
and bring them to the top on that thread right there and take the near ones bind them down and take the ones that are going to be on the far side of the hook it'll basically make a bite tie them down like I said I don't waste a lot of time on bugs because they usually only make it through one good solid day of fishing for me in the water that I my tube in mainly and then we're going to take the one last material for the tail section and that's a large large uh, dark bar ginger and I'm going to prep this one like I would a, a normal hackle and tie it in wet fly fashion meaning shiny side towards me and then we'll grab that with the hackle pliers make sure we don't grab those rubber legs wrong we're gonna give a hackle back right here and we're gonna bring it just in front of where we tied in the rubber legs and we're gonna tie it off Our excess. Make sure we catch all of it. And at this point, I'm going to give a quick whip finish. I want to lock everything in place there. I don't want my thread jumping on me and letting this wander. There we go. All right, now you're going to see some uh, my style of, of spinning. I don't waste too much time in cleaning it. First material we're going to tie in is orange body hair. I'm going to take a clump to start with, about the size of a, about the size of a number two pencil. Clip it off. This and this first one. I'm going to leave the the tips on. I'm going to position them with the uh, the tips just about the the length of the just extending just about to the bend of the hook, the end of the hook tie it in on top I'm gonna to keep it on top do a couple loose pinch wraps I'm gonna pull up get that flare keeping my hair on top for this first one and I'm gonna press it back and Tie back into it a little bit, right there. Number one. We're gonna put about three stacks. We should be able to fit about three stacks in here of the orange. I like to trim it off, cut the tips so they don't get tangled around when I'm spinning. I just finger clean it. Wrap it in. Get it spun. Pull it back. I don't 
don't use stackers. I don't really have want to spend the time with stackers. Give a couple wraps. So this isn't necessarily going to look like a commercial spun bug because it's not. I'm getting the results I want out of it. Again, clip the clump off, trim the tips off the back, finger clean the base or the butts. Flare it. Push it back by hand. Like I said, I like to do about three stacks of orange. Here's the third one. Again, clip it off. Clip the ends to make it more manageable. Finger clean the butts. Spin it on. Press it back. You're done with the orange. Next material you're going to tie in is brown body hair. And we're going to do the same thing. You usually get about two stacks of brown in the front. And when you're just learning how to spin hair, especially if you're trying to be artistic, which bugs can. Uh, can certainly lend to, lend themselves to. If you tie in a clump that just doesn't spin right, just back off. Doesn't ruin the fly. Discard it, it's just one clump. Push it back. I said I usually get two stacks in with the brown. For the nose of the fly. And this will be the second one. If you need more you can add it. Put the tips. Now there's a million ways to do this and there's probably a million ways to do it more efficient than I do. Uh, especially if you spend a lot of time tying bugs. Or your commercial tire. Get behind the eye. Pull it tight. Wrap it back. And we're going to throw a quick whip finish on there. Get that locked in place. Here's the spinning portion of the firecracker pop. Now I'm going to show you what I do. I don't use razor blades. Uh, for me, razor blades cause too many accidents and and uh, mistakes when I'm trimming, just because I'm not that good at it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dismount the fly. First thing I'm going to do is come in underneath, trim it flat. You don't have to get it right the first time. I guess the correct name for this would be firecracker diver. I call them all poppers. I trim them in all fashion. This one I particularly trim as a diver. Now what I do to start my shape is I start out looking at it, I sweep everything forward and then I shape the sides. Okay, I come in from the back side, bring the point of my scissors the eye and I trim my V first. Come in from the back side to the eye. I get the shape of the V. And once I have that, I come in from the top, do the same thing. Get my shape. Usually about three cuts and I've got the shape down. Round it off. A whole bunch of time grooming these. See, now we're starting to get that V. And once I get that V, I come across the top. I cut the collar to shape. Roughly just so I have something to work with, so I have a pattern. And then I just keep working towards the back. I come in from the back, in from the back. Once I cut that first V, I don't trim that any shorter. I just follow that as a guide. And then, like I said, afterwards, I come in and make sure I cut my the bottom of my fly flat. I like it flat. Trim off the stragglers that I have. And there you have it. The firecracker diver. Now you can get as meticulous as you want with it. You can work on it until you can put eyes on it. You can do whatever you want. This is how I fish it right here. Once I have everything in place, I trim my V with the scissors. Now I'll put a heavy dose of uh, Sally Henson's on the nose and I'll brush onto the bottom. Sally Henson, just a light coat on the bottom. Make it a little bit more durable. And it's ready to fish. Firecracker popper. Hope it adds to your box. Good luck. See you in the water.